is Jason Artiga, and this is another episode of Cinema Macabro. <laughs> Today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing and talking about Nightmare City by Umberto Lenzi, also known in Italy as Un Cubo Sullo Cita Contaminata, which translates to uh, a city that's contaminated. Germ City that's contaminated, something like that. The film was uh, made in 1980, a year like after um, the release of Dawn of the Dead by uh, George Romero. At that time, I think one of the producers of Dawn of the Dead was Dario Argento, and he also had Goblin do the score, the Italian uh, rock band. And during this time, when Dawn of the Dead came to Italy and played in Italy, it was called Zombie. That was the name of it. So, during that time, it was such a big hit in Italy that they started churning out multiple zombie movies. I mean, more than America. I mean, between uh, Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead, there must have been at least 50 zombie films made in Italy. So, during this time, you had uh, one of the pinnacle Italian-made zombie films called Zombie Due, or in America's release, Just Plain Old Zombie, which was uh, a separate film, but try to they tried to bankroll on Dawn and Dead, and it was really good, directed by Lucio Fulci, the ma- one of the Italian masters of horror. And at this time, you had Umberto Lenzi, who did Nightmare City. Now, Nightmare City is pretty much the precursor of the running zombie film. So, like, the, the, the next running zombie film you had, you can't call them zombies, so I'll get to that later, was 28 Days Later, which <laughs> zombies, but they're infected, and pretty much Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Now, Nightmare City, where, where do I blink? Okay, okay. It stars Hugo Stiglitz, Laura Trotter, Mario Rosario Omaggio, and veteran actor Mel Ferrer. Now, Hugo Stiglitz, if, if you hear that name and it sounds familiar, yes, there was a character named after this actor in Inglorious Bastards. And, yeah, not that Hugo Stiglitz. So, Hugo Stiglitz was a, a Mexican actor, which Umberto Lenzi wanted to hire because he felt that since this film was being uh, halfly shot in Spain, they needed a Spanish actor so they could make money off the, the Spanish audience, which is a pretty good move. So the film begins with Dean Miller, <laughs> played by Hugo Stiglitz. He goes to an airport because he hears about this nuclear disaster that affected this plant. So he goes to the airport to talk to the scientists about this, and then he finds out that a C-130 Hercules is having trouble, and they're landing. So the Hercules lands, they make an emergency lands, and when the plane doors open, like guys who are like mutated run and attack the military personnel. Some of them are like impervious to bullets and they start draining them of their blood. They, they're like vampires and, and pretty much attack them. So Miller, he flees, gets, he, he gets out of there with his life and he tries to go to the TV station to warn the public. But then this General uh, Murchison, played by um, Mel Ferrer, tells him that they can't do it because it's going to cause mass hysteria. Miller then tries to find his wife, Anna, played by Laura Trotter. She's a doctor at a hospital. And pretty much, the let's call them infected, they pretty much go to the hospital and attack the hospital. During the same time, the infection is getting bigger and bigger, so they attack a TV station while there's like some uh, aerobic, uh, disco aerobic exercise thing in such a gratuitous way and pretty much an exploitation way. I mean, hello, the Italians in the 80s. That they pretty much take over the TV st- uh, station and then later on they attack the city's power station and they destroy it and pretty much everything goes into darkness making the situation a lot worse as the contamination gets bigger and bigger miller tries to take his wife and escape and while like the 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 
general and a lot of the scientists, they're in a bunker, you know, and they're trying to hold off there. So while Miller's trying to survive, he's trying to find answers like how how can this be stopped and how can they survive the whole uh, situation with his wife? And so they go to like his weekend retreat getaway house and they start getting attacked there. Now, what hap- what will happen to Miller and his wife? Well, you got to see the movie. It's now I'm going to this is where I cut the review short. I don't want to give away anything uh, too much, but. This film is pretty awesome for many ways. One, it's campy. It's campy as hell. <laughs> the special effects, like if you see the movie in Blu-ray, you can see that the special effects, some of the zombie makeup does not blend in. But it's actually very interesting. It's not that gory uh, because they just drink blood. Yes, there's blood in this story. But it's very interesting. And it pretty much, you can see where it inspired 28 Days Later, uh, the new Dawn of the Dead film. And at this time, another movie came out called Rabbit at the same year by David Cronenberg, which was almost similar. However, they were more uh, rabbit humans that suffered from a strain of rabies. Now, Rabbit is far superior in storytelling because it's David Cronenberg, of course. But Umberto Lenzi, I feel that this film's highly underrated. This film inspired Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez to do Planet Terror. And a lot of that movie is pretty much inspired by Umberto Lenzi. At one time, uh, Quentin Tarantino saw Umberto Lenzi at, I think, the Cannes Film Festival. And he said, oh, I really love this movie. It's like the best, one of the best zombie films I ever saw. And Umberto Lenzi, in an outraged scream, it is not the zombie movie. It is not the zombie movie. They're infected. They're infected. See, the whole film was pretty much uh, a comment on nuclear disasters. And that's what uh, director Umberto Lenzi was doing. And he's a veteran director. I mean, this guy has churned lots of films, some horror and some action in Italy. And I feel like this is the film that is the precursor to all uh, films outside of zombie that are kind of zombie-ish, but not really. And this film also has this really catchy soundtrack. Um, it's done by Stelvio Cipriani. And it's like kind of cheesy. It's like a lot of uh, it's a fast beat, uh, almost sounds 70s. It's a fast beat uh, synth uh, soundtrack that is actually so damn catchy that you'll just it'll drill in your head in a lot of the scenes uh, involving the, the infected um, zombie attacks. This film is very interesting, and, and, and at times, it's pretty ambitious, and I'll tell you why. Because there are shots in this movie that you would only see in CG in films like World War Z, where there's a scene where there's a helicopter that flies over a park, and there's hundreds of zombies like trying to fi- uh, uh, follow the helicopter like a flock. And who, that whole scene that was directed was actually done, it was done really well. The cinematography is is pretty okay. It's done by Hans Berman Sanchez, <laughs> uh, a Spanish uh, cinematographer who. Ha- and I'm telling you, if you love zombie films, you have to see this one. It's actually a, a pretty fun uh, zombie film. It's not like one of the best ones ever written, uh, being that the story is kind of vague. But I really like this film, and I'm going to tell you guys, go see this film what do you think of nightmare city and what do you think of the zombie running genre uh just give me your thoughts at the comment section down below leave a like and please subscribe i need more subscribers people and with that i'll see you guys at the next episode peace